50 years ago, when I was 15, I persuaded my dad to take Philip and myself to Blandford to fish the Dorset Stour for the very first time. I'd seen the river a few times, not very many times at all. I think I'd seen the river at Wimborne the uh, September before, and this was midwinter. What we didn't know was much about the river at all. We just knew that we could get day tickets in Blandford, in Conyers, who were still there, uh, a, a fishing tackle and gun shop. And off we went. We were used to fishing the Froom and the Piddle, and we fished Breach Pond. What we didn't realise on the Stour was we'd had snow not long before. It was, it was that time of year. And that snow had melted. We could still see snow under the trees on the far bank. And the river was a horrible sort of yellow colour <laughs> with uh, what they call snow broth, which is uh, sort of just filthy and horrible. And there was sort of foam coming down the river, which 50 years ago was more common because washing detergents had more foaming agents, which were taken off out of the uh, detergents later on. So we we picked a couple of swims or sort of a tree lined bank and on the other side there was a, a steep bank with a footpath. We could see the, uh, the kids from Bryanston School walking up and down there. And we flogged away and we didn't catch anything. I, I think we might have had one or two minnows. The river was pushing quite hard. And we fished fairly close in with maggots, possibly bread, I, d I can't remember, but we caught nothing. And it was only the following year when I went up to fish on the Child Oakford water with Do against Dorchester that I finally caught something out of the stow, but that's a tale for another day. In those 50 years since, that particular stretch of water, which was always known as Crown Meadows and the Deer Park, Although I've walked up there once or twice, I've only actually fished it another two times. And both times it was in a, a, a local team match called the Beaumont Cup. The first time I had a mixed bag, half a dozen dace, a gudgeon and a bream. You think, oh, that can't be too bad. Well, the bream wasn't very big because the total weight was four ounces. And that was in the mid 80s. And I remember one thing about that day as we walked back with the local Blandford uh, secretary and match secretary, I don't know, can't remember who they were. We got to one peg where there was a, a, a dip in the bank and no one had drawn that peg. It was pegged, but I think we must have had about six teams in there at the time. And for some reason, someone must have been a man short and they said, oh, that's the peg that should have won it today, but with no one drawn there and nothing happened. And the weights were pretty low. I, I can't remember what won it, two or three pounds, that was all. Because of the way the venues switched around between the half dozen clubs, it meant each club would put up a venue every three years. So three years later, we were back on Blanford's Water, back on Crown Meadows and the Deer Park, possibly Nutford as well. I, to get the 36 pegs in. And I drew this peg that they pointed out three years before. And this day, it was quite a cold day. It was a north wind. I, I don't think it was feeling that good for some reason. I, I don't know why, but whether I had a cold or something. The day before I'd fished down on Throop and had uh, quite a nice catch a day, seven or eight pounds a day on a stick float. And I, like I say, I drew this peg and it was fairly shallow, only about three foot deep. And I fished away with a waggler and it was full of nice dace, five to the pound, had about 70 dace, a grayling of all things, small grayling, one or two perch, had nearly 15 pounds. And it's not hard to guess that that was easily the best weight. The, the next best weights were two pounds and three pounds and they were either side of me. It was that good a peg. So that was in the late 80s. So Having finally joined Blandford as a member this year, I decided to uh, fish on, on this water. And I started off 
in the same area as that peg all those years ago there were odd fish topping and i started with a stick float for number four john dean with a round top and it went through nicely there were i say these odd small fish topping there's a footpath on the other side must be a public one with people with dogs which occasionally were going in the river which was quite annoying and the swim didn't seem to be coming to life much so after a fairly short time I went up the river and found a narrower stretch with a bit more depth stuck to the same float tackled up with a size 20 fairly fine wire hook and in this second spot the current was going through the middle fairly strongly and in the edge and on the far side it was steadier water and I persevered fishing up just on the crease and at first I, I caught a couple of days after a short time and then I was picking up odd fish odd roach as well no great size but one or two quite nice days and there was a big lesson on this day the fish were quite finicky I got caught in the weeds once or twice and had to re-tackle up and re-shot it up and at some point I thought having fished a 22 the day before further up river maybe a 22 was the answer which seemed pretty fine but and I started to get a few more fish on that. And one of the great lessons with stick float fishing is that just because you can put it through okay doesn't mean you'll catch. Sometimes you have to really play around with the depth, play around with the presentation. And that was the big lesson on this day. Started to ease it through, just really concentrate on slowing it down, not stopping it, just getting the current speed, the speed of that float just right and the day started to come quite regularly I'd say the best days of the day was probably six ounces some of them were only half an ounce or an ounce the roach weren't really showing up I think I had three or four in the end a tiny tiny perch at one point but it was really really enjoyable stick float fishing and I think I'm a little bit inspired at the moment about stick float fishing. Jim Baxter's fantastic book, Stick Float Wizardry, is out, out now. Uh, and there is so much on stick float fishing in there that <laughs> it's hard to know where to begin. But this basic of getting the stick float right, putting it through the swim right, if anyone ever says, oh, the perfect combination is, for instance, centre pin and stick float, well, that will give you one presentation, which is fairly slowed down and overshotted. Sometimes they want it run at them fairly fast. Other days, you've got to slow it down just a bit. I hope you've enjoyed this short session. And uh, until next time, it's goodbye for now.